Awesome. I heard the little voice that told me that the recording is going. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get started with opening statements. Uh, so each candidate will just give a brief statement um, and they're welcome to discuss how they got started in the GOSH community and, of course, reiterate their key points from the candidate statements that they should be posting on the forum. Um, so, yeah, I am going to hand it to you now, Safdi. Um, hopefully your connection is doing OK. And yeah, please give us a candidate statement and introduce yourself. Uh, so hi, I'm Sakti. I posted my uh, statement on the forum a couple of days ago, but uh, to introduce myself, uh, I work a lot with community building and synthetic biology with iGEM and um, an organization that I created to like advance the bioeconomy of the Midwest and uh, me in, in doing these efforts, I interacted with the GOSH community through Africa OSH um, on low cost SIN bio educational kits. And now I'm sort of interested in uh, taking my work to the broader GOSH community, uh, which has done a lot of progress on um, open, open science, uh, open hardware and community building as well. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much, Safi. Uh, it's great to have you. And yeah, so thanks for introducing yourself and reading through some of your statement. Um, I'm happy now to move us on to the next section, which is just question and answers. Um, I have a couple questions, but Penn is here from the community, so I'm going to give him the opportunity to ask questions first. Uh, Penn, do you have any questions that come to mind for our candidate? Uh, yeah, thank you, Bree, and thank you, thank you, Sakti, for joining this call today. Uh, uh, nice to meet you. Um, I'm I'm excited to uh, hear that you work with iGEM. I've uh, I haven't uh, done any work directly with iGEM, but I've heard a lot about what they do. So so I'm certainly pretty excited about that. Uh, uh, I I love to hear more about your um experience in you know community community building and working on community governance uh in terms of you know how we do things and make decisions together and how to uh you know get the community engaged for example uh and turn it into a sustainable thing so that you know one day in the future you know when you're no longer uh, a community leader in the community would the community continue to go on right without you yeah sense. can you say speak to that so i'll speak to that in two ways i guess i'll start with iGEM since you mentioned that first um so at iGEM a couple of years ago as a project member but then uh last year i became a project head and um there i'm working essentially in somewhat of a leadership role um that takes different members of the community um, on to, together on working on low cost educational kits. And in the capacity of that, I uh, initiated, you know, partnerships with other organizations such as Sinba Africa, Africa Ash, um, and, and et cetera. And so a large part of community uh, like building for me is working with external organizations on um, collaborative events and because uh, that's a way to, I guess, advance the goals of um, like what you're focused on. And that's what I've done with uh, Sinbao uh, at iGEM. Now, um, more specifically, I guess, with uh, the governance side of things is what I've done recently. Uh, the same time that I began, began at iGEM, I also uh, collaborated with a couple of my iGEM colleagues on um, forming a Midwest bioeconomy group. And um, in that, we're focused on a variety of things from educational programming um, to policy making with uh, US policymakers. And um, in that, we uh, have, have, have a variety of you know, stakeholders from students to policy to um, academia as well. And uh, community building in that sense for me has been uh, working with these members once again on the type of partnerships that I mentioned, but also um, working together on, I guess, ideas that we see that 
can be improved on the policy level too. So um, in terms of government the governance, because uh, I know you mentioned that and I know it's important to the GOSH community, I guess um, it's a little bit new to me since these roles have been, uh, I've only been in them for now about two years, but I guess I've navigated through it a little bit from what I've done already. Thank you. Thank you. Sakti. Yeah, Penn, did you have a follow up to that? Um, um, I, 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 I have one or two more questions, but why yeah. don't you go ahead with a question too, Free? Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the questions that I had for you, Sakti, is is actually quite related to what you were describing of engaging these different stakeholders, from educators to policymakers, and all of these different realms and disciplines that they work in. Um. How would you envision, what kind of plans would you have of encouraging new members who might be part of this community but not as familiar with GOSH um, to join? And what sort of programs or any preliminary kind of ideas or thoughts on how you would really like to engage those audiences um, in the GOSH community? So yeah, that's my question for you, Sakti. Yeah, so I think last year with actually one of the GOSH um, like programs in terms of grant funding, I uh, kind of proposed this uh, for my iGEM work, but um, a large part of like getting new people into the community for me would be targeting uh, younger students, especially um, because generally, I guess uh, they're the ones who are not as aware of communities such as GOSH or iGEM or et cetera. So um, a large part of that for me is reaching out directly to institutions, whether they be high schools, community colleges, and um, four-year institutions, and reaching out to their students because they generally tend to have the interest in initiatives like these, but um, they might be apprehensive not to join. And making that effort to reach out to them is uh, some of the stuff that I've done with what I'm currently doing and something that I plan on uh, doing so for the GOSH community. And then um, to address the other point of uh, keeping like new members who just joined the community engaged with um, uh, the community in general, I would say a large part of that for me would be um, seeing like seeing how uh, GOSH can apply in their community. And part of this, I guess, from my own perspective would be like the regional events that I know GOSH has done with um, RE-GOSH and Africa GOSH. So uh, that part would be a way of, you know, keeping GOSH members who may be new in the ecosystem. But, yeah. Thank you, Sakti. Um, Penn, what were some of your questions? Right. Uh, yeah, so I am... Um... I feel a big challenge for the global GOSH community right now is that uh, previous sources of funding have dried up, uh, including the fact that in a couple of months, Brie will, will no longer be with us. Um, and uh, I think, you know, the challenge is fundraising uh, for yeah. GOSH uh, activities in general. Uh, and specifically uh, the in-person gathering that people are planning for next year. Uh, so with all of that said, uh, I'd love to learn about uh, your previous work uh, at iGEM and other communities. And um, in cases where fundraising was required, yeah. you know, uh, do you have any experience you can bring from that? Yeah, in this yeah, yeah and it's yeah, it's a great question you asked, and I do have experience with that. So um, do you have any other part of your question, or can I just answer? Uh, do you no, have any I, other? I, yeah, I think that was my question. Uh, okay, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I do have experience like already raising grants, um, but I am like with my collaborators working on bigger governmental grants in, in uh, this coming year. But uh, to speak on what I've already done is leverage some platforms that you may be aware of, uh, such as Experiment. Um, 
uh, experiment. And then also it was previous, they actually gosh that funded the low cost educational kits that I did with iGen. But um, a large, I, a large part of like, I guess my own experience in these initiatives has been writing grants um, or uh, submitting grants and then receiving them. And even now with my initiatives, I've been, you know, most of it's been writing grants so that we can get funded for next year to work on initiatives like the Midwest Bioeconomy and the low cost educational kits. So I would say, yes, I have a lot of fundraising experience and grant writing experience and um, I'm planning on doing more of that next year. So um, in terms of gosh, it wouldn't be too far of an extension for me to contribute to efforts in terms of uh, fundraising or grant funding and uh, that, sort, that sort of stuff. <clears throat> Thank you, Saki. Hi, uh, sorry. I, uh, I was answering the doorbell, but I kept the audio on, so I was listening. Thank you, Sakti. Was there another question you had as well, Penn? Uh, uh, I think there was, but uh, um, yeah, why don't we, uh, you know, take turns? Did you have take turn? Brief? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so I guess, Sakti, if I were to ask you, how would you imagine the GOSH community to evolve and grow over your two-year term if you were elected? So two years from now, how would you imagine the GOSH community? So I, I might be getting a little bit repetitive here, but um, one part of that, I guess, it would be, first of all, with um, expanding its outreach and um, having, it mo having more younger students involved in the community uh, so that uh, in terms of longevity, um, GOSH can continue to grow as a community if it has more representation of um, students in the community, but as well as um, potentially early career um, individuals. And then um, beyond just uh, engagement, uh, I would want to see uh, a continued focus in terms of like the open availability of ideas being shared regarding uh, low cost projects um, as GOSH has done currently, but um, in, in, I guess an increased emphasis on that yeah, uh, throughout the next two years. Um, and then I guess uh, just bringing it in, in touch the GOSH community closer with other similar communities uh, that have been working on either open science or um, uh, hardware or STEM education and all of that. Um, because as I was mentioning towards the start, um, having that partnerships with other organizations can ensure GOSH's uh, longevity as a network. <clears throat> thank you, Saki. Ben, I'm gonna hand it back to you. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, so uh, uh, sorry, I might have missed like maybe five seconds ish of your previous answer, Sakti, about fundraising. So, apologies if I'm making you repeat yourself. Yeah. Um. Uh, but I know from my uh experience on the Gosh Community Council a couple of years ago, and uh, uh and also just the fact that I happen to know some current Community Council members. Uh, I I have the observation, and this is not like a criticism, uh, it's just that uh, my observation is that uh, most community council members, including myself, don't really have, you know, that kind of fundraising experience for communities. So, so I guess my quick follow-up is whether uh, you'd be okay uh, uh, and comfortable with kind of like being the lead person, you know, getting the council to start thinking about fundraising and kind of getting the rest of the council to participate uh, in, in uh, you know, under your lead uh, as one possibility to think about fundraising and, and, and pursuing those opportunities. Would you be comfortable in that kind of leadership role? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've done it with the other communities I've worked on. So um, I think that uh, in that case, yes, I would be able to take the initiative and. I guess steer the group towards um, uh, like fundraising activities. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did also, I think this was 
part of your previous question that I didn't get, um, I didn't really uh, respond to, but I think it was you mentioning actually the in-person gatherings and the funding being uh, mm -hmm. limited for that. Um, and in my own experience with uh, grant funding, I have gotten a grant to like host an event, um, but we're looking for us actually with what I've done in iGEM and Great Lakes, um, we actually are now seeing, is there other alternative ways of um, engaging the community besides in-person gatherings? Uh, mm. I, obviously, in-person gatherings are uh, crucial, but if the fundraising is limited, how else do you pursue that? And um, part of that has just been like our representation at conferences that are not organized by us and therefore you know, require less uh, funding on our part. But um, that's been one solution and now there's solutions have been uh, virtual meetings in a similar fashion that Gosh has already done. Um, so those were just some ideas I had in response to that. But um, definitely I think still fundraising for some in-person events is crucial and you know, I had experience so I would be more than happy to continue that at Gosh. Thank you. That's that's great to hear. Thank you, Sakti. Yeah, and that made me also think of another question as well. Um, so we've talked a lot about imagining kind of um, new futures and how situations might look um, and new and emerging kind of groups and things like that. But in terms of kind of existing work that's going on in GOSH, and I think more specifically to kind of the existing working groups or programs that go on, um, are there any in particular that interest you in being involved in? Oftentimes, council members may... Uh, join some of the working groups that are on the forum or get involved in existing community projects. And examples that I can think of are the gathering working group, um, the ambassador program working group, and groups of people on the forum that work on the floor or that work on the roadmap. Um, yeah, and there's much more than just those three, but um, yeah. is there anything in particular in GOSH that you'd like to get uh, more involved in that is already established? So um, when I posted my statement on the forum, I had two um, that I actually took from my statement last year when I ran for the council. But I think my ideas have kind of evolved. And um, uh, while I did write on my statement that gatherings are an important part, and I guess that comes naturally from the other work I've done, um, I would like to uh, potentially see like uh, w w collaborating on the uh, first of all, the fundraising aspect of, of GOSH and that domain, but also maybe the roadmap, uh, as you mentioned. Um, because I think even at iGEM, um, alongside uh, iGEM ambassadors and um, other iGEM members, we're working on a roadmap for iGEM um, in the coming years for the next 10 years. So uh, thinking about that leads me to also um, want to contribute to that at GOSH, especially with 2025 being a critical year for GOSH. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, Penn, do you have any other questions? Um, I do have another question, but it's uh, it's at the tip of my tongue. I couldn't, couldn't quite get it out at the moment. I, I just had it in my head, and then uh, no, I, I kind of forgot. Uh, so I might need a moment. Do you have another question, Bree? Um, I'll think about it a little bit more, but I, I think I've asked pretty much all the questions that I had prepared. Um, but if you still want to take a minute, Pen, to to think about your question, feel free. Uh yeah, I um I can't remember exactly what I was gonna ask, but um uh, another one is kind of appearing right now, which is um um Um, uh, um, you know, one of the, oh, sorry, were you going to say something? Three? I don't know if it's my connection or Sakti's as well, but you're breaking up a little okay. bit. So I'm going to turn my camera off and see if that helps. And then oh, maybe you sorry, can try again. Uh, yeah, maybe I can turn myself off too. Um, I was going to say that um, I know one of the challenges I Uh, uh, which happens sometimes is that 
uh, sometimes it's not clear um, who should take the initiative on what. And I think that's partially because those were really early days and we were trying to figure out how to do, sing, do things uh, as we went along. Um, uh, but I guess, you know, my point is sometimes, you know, we would have a long meeting and we would talk about a lot of things, but it's actually not so clear. Like, okay, so what do we do now? Or uh, who should take the lead on something? Or there, there was that kind of kind of atmosphere just where it, like, it almost seemed like we were just waiting for someone to take the initiative. <laughs> and then <laughs> no one was forthcoming, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, so just this kind of like interactions that, 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 that sometimes happens. And I don't know whether, you know, from your experience, you can speak to uh, how to kind of get things moving, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm drawing back to iGen uh, with what we're doing with this low cost um, education kits. Uh, we have had that experience at least among actually uh, the project heads team, um, which I am I was one of the early, I guess, uh, project heads. Um, and with some of the newer project heads, yes, we've had this, uh, issue of engagement and you know like what do we do next after we've had a meeting and mm -hmm. um, it, you know it's been either me or I guess a, a couple of other uh, senior project heads to kind of chip in with our ideas but um, I, I have uh, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing but I have a lot of experience having to be the one to um, get the uh, get the group moving with either maybe a grant or event planning or um, anything of that sort. So uh, mm -hmm. it wouldn't it wouldn't be the first time. Uh, um, once okay. again, I don't know if that, I don't know if that's a, a good or bad thing, but um, <laughs> I definitely uh, would be able to do that, and it's been something that I've done before. So okay, okay, great. That's good to hear. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I I I I I do believe that you know, gosh, is certainly not the. Uh, the only place that would be facing challenges like this so um so yeah knowing that you have to experience dealing with it this uh reassuring thank you any other questions pen i am good but i don't know if you have any more uh uh good point we i I can't remember the other question I was going to ask before, but but that's okay. Oh, oh, what about this though? Okay, sorry. One more uh, kind of uh, 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 random question, which is, um, uh, 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 I, I, um, I'm as as you may uh, have uh, discerned, I I I think about governance a lot, and. Yeah. Um, uh, and one thing I've been trying to do, especially when I was a community council member, is to um, kind of help gather uh, and organize all of the ways of working that the GOSH community has developed and put together over the years. So it could be things like, you know, the code of conduct, for example, um, or, or other kind of these kind of guidelines and policies and documents. Uh, uh, this kind of culminated in one of the last things I've been working on, which is setting up the Gosh Community Constitution. Now, yep. uh, you know, as part of the full disclosure, yes, I was involved in that process, uh, but also that I'm asking this question as kind of like an honest, neutral question, so it's not a rhetorical question. Uh, and I, I am happy, happy to be contradicted and criticized and all that. So I just don't know. Um, I'm just curious about your thoughts on um, kind of institutionalizing, you know, guidelines and how we work, having these documents, uh, and uh, uh, and whether that's something you found worthwhile doing in your past experience, or not really, or you know, gen just general thoughts like that. Like, how do we institutionalize our governance, basically, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I guess um, with what I've done before, um, it's not been not like necessarily as focused on 
governance in this form of, um, you know, having like openly available documents such as the constitution, which a couple of weeks ago, I got to read uh, the working updates on that. Um, but I, I do think with, uh, with a community like GOSH, it's valuable to have uh, documents like these um, and with input from uh, the public forums, which I know um, there's kind of talk right now about in, in forthcoming elections, how does the process work? Given what happened this, given what happened this year, but I think, given the nature of how I guess Gosh is set up with its forums and with its like open community, I do see the value in having documents like these, um, with public input, with being publicly available. And uh, although I don't necessarily come from a background having done this, uh, in the two years I've kind of interacted with the Gosh community, I do appreciate the fact that um, things like this exist and the election process exists um, because uh, going to kind of our last conversation about, you know, um, people in the community not necessarily being engaged, especially at like um, upper levels. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's important, I think, and the key thing that uh, not to criticize, I guess, iGEM or anything that I've done previously, but it's, the main lack of any form of, you know, community engagement regarding leadership and community engagement regarding like decisions affecting the full, full community. Um, mm -hmm. So, so I think compared to what I've done before, um, I see the value in this, and also uh, I would be, you know, uh, in the two years looking forward to working with. Um, the GOSH Council and then other members on uh, stuff like this. Because I, I, as I was saying, yeah, I do see the value in GOSH having this compared to other communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. That makes sense. Awesome. Cool. Well, I don't have any further questions. And Pan, I'll go to you one more time in case you have another one. <laughs> any left? <laughs> uh i i think i'm good for now thank you <laughs> yeah thank you sakti we had plenty of questions for you today so um yeah i appreciate your thoughtful responses and um yeah so the if we can go ahead and close now that'll give me a little bit more time to go ahead and save this recording and pu publish it back with the community on the forum um, I usually try my best to time stamp as well with different questions and with the candidate statement at the beginning um, so hopefully by the end of today, I will be able to have this recording up on the forum so that everyone else in the GOSH community is able to see this conversation as well. Um, thank you so much, Sakti, for taking the time uh, to chat to us, uh, especially given some of the connection issues you've been having. It's much appreciated. Uh, Penn, thank you so much for joining and asking um, very well thought out and uh, useful questions. And yeah, with that, I will go ahead and close for today. Um, I will tell you to register if you have not yet, but I'm pretty sure both of you have registered. So everyone else watching this recording, register if you have not yet, yet registered to vote. And yeah, I will go ahead and close for today and see you all soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bree. Thank you, Sakti. See you soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was nice Bye. Bye. Bye.